up, you beautiful bastards? Welcome back to The Philip DeFranco Show. Hey, hit that like button to help spread and promote some common sense news coverage. Also, quick thing, for the first time in six months, I actually uploaded two videos today with me possibly having exposed myself over on uh, youtube.com slash DeFranco does that channel that I upload to every three to six months. So if after today's news poison, you need a little bit of a, a palate cleanser, definitely go check that out. It'll be one of the top links down below. With that said, let's just jump into it. Now, the first thing that we're gonna talk about today, the most requested story from the text line is it's, uh, it's infuriating. You know, we've been talking about and trying to keep up to date on the Gabby Petito story since around last Thursday. And unfortunately, the, the story in the news today, not about uh, finding where the hell Brian Laundry is or anything to the, to the core of this story. Rather, it's one of the stories that have kind of spawned from the core story. You know, we talked about the media reports accusing people of kind of treating this story as a game or some people treating it as entertainment, not taking into account this is a real person. And yesterday we talked about Joy Reid saying this is a, another example of missing white woman syndrome, the, the debate around that. And as it turns out, there was also another big conversation happening, another big kind of a piece of content that was surging, and that were psychics. Turns out there have been a slew of social media psychics saying they were connecting with Gabby, they were feeling Brian's energy. People like, Kelly, I'm not gonna finish reading your name out because fuck you. Making a whole bunch of videos saying things like, she said this six days ago. He, his energy does not feel like a killer. I do feel that he was working on himself. I do feel like he did have a hot temper, but I don't feel like he would have purposely killed her in a way where in his logical mind. That being said, I do feel like he took her life, okay? And it's very interesting because I feel like he almost had to take her life because in his logical mind, that was the right thing to do at the time. I don't know if he lost his temper and harmed her to the point where he had no other choice but to take her life. Um, I do feel like she loved him up until her last breath, which is really sad. Well, she is not alone in this, this fire hose of just distasteful, disgusting bullshit. But just to reiterate to Kelly or whoever the hell else out there, this is a real person with a real family. You disgusting clown. Why would you take your parlor trick and turn it into entertainment while there's a family out there who lost their daughter? And I understand, like, I don't have a problem with psychics in general. I mean, I personally don't believe in them, but I know that some people, if they're lost in their life or they lost a loved one, they can go to a psychic. They can get peace regardless of whether it's real or not. People process things differently. But what you are doing, that's a whole fucking different thing that you're putting out there to the public. And you, in front of hundreds of thousands of people, are out there defending the, the person who we believe most likely murdered her. You are trash, what you are doing is trash. You're gonna say that you're, you're coming forward with the, the best of intentions, but you, I think, are a horrible person. You should be ashamed of yourself, and when you're not doing this little show for TikTok and the world, I hope that when you sit alone, you really feel that. But yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave it before I say the words that I wanna say uh, and get myself in trouble. Then, you know, when I talk about a store or a restaurant, there being, you know, the, this big altercation regarding masks, most of you probably have like the template in your head. Like, oh, okay, the place has a policy, you gotta wear a mask, someone doesn't wanna wear it. Uh, but then, uh, take that, put it into Bizarre World, AKA a uh, part of Texas, boom, pops out this story because you have Natalie Wester and her husband, Jose Lopez Guerrero. They go to meet some friends at a place called Hang Time Bar and Grill, which they said was a pretty rare date night for them since they're new parents to a four month old boy who has cystic fibrosis. And so they're like, even though most masks, you know, it's more for other people, let's wear ours in public just to be as safe as possible for our son. And according to the Facebook post from Natalie, when she entered the restaurant, they asked her to take her mask off. But saying because the music was so loud, they just assumed that it was related to the staff checking their IDs. So they ended up putting their mask back on after that and went to order. And after ordering, Natalie said a waitress came over and said, our manager sent me over because I'm nicer than he is. And yes, this is political. And continuing, she then told me that masks are not allowed in their building and they can make the rules because they're a private business. Saying the mask doesn't work. It's like using a chain link fence to keep out mosquitoes and doesn't give people enough oxygen. With Natalie then explaining that they were wearing the mask out of concern for their immunocompromised baby. But ultimately being told there's really no other option and that they'd have to close out their tab if they didn't comply. With a couple saying they didn't want to make a scene or ruin their friend's night. So they just decided to go home and write about their experience on Facebook. Which they also left as a review on the restaurant's page and it absolutely went viral. And since then, the owner of the restaurant, Thomas Blackmer, admitted on Facebook and to reporters that he doesn't allow masks inside his business. And saying that he implemented this ban back in April because he doesn't think that masks stop COVID from spreading and believes that criminals can use them to get away with robbery, theft, or vandalism in a place where his two adult children work. And adding, I'm not doing things that put them at risk. And while with this, Blackmer, of course, has gotten a ton of backlash. People also digging up, finding that he shared anti-vax and anti-mask content on social media, receiving a flood of backlash both over the phone and on 
online. But at the same time, the couple at the center of this story has also faced backlash from people who asked why they even went out in the first place. With many digging through their social media posts to call them out any other times that they responded without a mask or at a large gathering. The couple responding to their son's doctors have encouraged them to still live their lives, saying that they just advise us to be a little extra cautious when we're going out and use our brains and make decisions as we feel appropriate, and that's why we left. Regarding their experience at Thomas Blackburn's restaurant, they added, Thomas stated that he does not care for masks, nor believes that they work. I am confused why me wearing one or not wearing one in any setting would matter to them. Right, which is an argument that we've seen pop up in this debate before. Right, saying that it's not an equal same thing to require masks or ban them. But hey, with this story, I want to pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts here? Do you see what Blackburn is doing here with the banning of masks as essentially the equivalent of requiring masks? Or no, do you think that's an absolutely stupid bullshit argument? Yes, no, why, why not? I'd love to know. Then in today's celeb dump, we had Conor McGregor throwing out the first pitch of last night's Cubs game. With many saying to the relief of Dr. Fauci, that was the worst first pitch I've ever seen. Though, uh, Carly Rae Jepsen will always have a special place in my heart. And at the end, Conor McGregor kind of just ended up doing what he's done a lot of the last few years. He failed publicly, then made excuses, and then still somehow talked shit, even though we all just saw that. Calling it the most devastating first pitch ever seen, saying the venom was there, and saying so much so that if it was on target, we would have had a problem. Though, to be fair to Conor McGregor, it was probably his leg, because as we've seen, he's very good at throwing stuff. Then we had Nicole Richie back in the news because she had an absolutely fire birthday party. We also had David Dobrik in the news because reportedly he is stranded in Slovakia. For those who don't know, David was actually born in Slovakia, but he came to the US as a child and as a dreamer. And because of his DACA status, he hasn't been able to leave the country, but in a recent vlog saying, hey, I got my green card. And all of this seemingly a part of his Discovery Plus series, but he ended up posting to his story yesterday that he can't get out of the country and back into the States right now. Currently here, I'm still in Slovakia, except now it's only me and Taylor. Everyone went back home because this is taking way longer and it's a lot harder than I thought it was getting my visa and green card. Um, but I, I hope to return to the state soon. It's like I'm lost, I'm literally stranded. But uh, for those of you that are not fans of David and you're like, good, uh, I wouldn't get too happy. Uh, there are different rules for rich and famous people. I'm sure it'll get figured out. From that, I wanna take a second to thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon, if you don't know, is like the adult version of cereal, but like the good adult version. It has all the fantastic tastes that you want, but it's also high protein, low carb, and zero grams of sugar. There are basically tons of nutritional value and none of the sugar rush you'd get from childhood cereal favorite. And while with Magic Spoon, when you get that first bite, it's gonna feel too good to be true, it is not. It is perfect for busy people looking for a quick, guilt-free snack that's filling and keeps the carbs low. Also, if you're a cereal anytime person, go ahead and eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, because why not? I've been a subscriber for a bit. I've joked about, and I sometimes a little bit worry that they're gonna earn all their money back from me because I just keep buying. And honestly, it is hard to say, like, what's my favorite? Fruities, great. Frosted's amazing. Uh, peanut butter, and when you mix it with cocoa, Oh my God. I've also recently brought back fan favorites like cookies and cream and maple waffle. Also, uh, guys, if you're watching, why not bring back jelly donut while you're at it? It is so good. Also, if you have favorites that are more like cinnamon and blueberry, boom, they got you covered as well. And all of this with Magic Spoon shipping directly to your doorstep and it's affordable at roughly $1.80 per bowl. So if you love cereal like I do, but you want a healthier, more nutritional option, you gotta check out Magic Spoon. Especially because this is the first time that Magic Spoon has ever released the option to build your very own custom box. So just go to magicspoon.com slash Franco and enter code to Franco to build your own variety box for $5 off. Then we had Apple in the news for two reasons. The first being that reportedly Apple is working on iPhone features to detect depression, which I would say uh, you already did it. The daily average screen time last week was nine hours. You don't need a special algorithm. You already cracked the code. And secondly, you had Apple in the news because The Verge reported that according to a leaked Apple memo, Tim Cook says that employees who leak memos do not belong at Apple. Awkward. With Tim saying that the company is doing everything in its power to track these people down, but uh, apparently haven't found them yet. And then in news, and it turns out I actually lied because Apple is in this story as well. According to a new report, the EU is moving forward with plans for legislation that will require all phone manufacturers to use the same charger. Reportedly, the legislation will be introduced Thursday. It will also apply to tablets and headphones. Many advocates saying that it will help cut down on e-waste and be far more convenient for users. In fact, the movement has already made some headway already, with many manufacturers over the last year shipping out phones without a charger as they expect users to have something that will already work. Right, and the more you look at the legislation, you realize one of the biggest losers in this would be Apple. Right, anyone with a mixed device household knows about Apple's insistence on their just dumb bullshit cables, lightning port, fuck you. Don't act like you do it because it's better. You love your walled garden. And for their part, Apple has pushed back against these plans, claiming that it stifles innovation, it could create more e-waste. But to that I say, if you care about innovation, why the lightning cable? You just released the iPhone 13, still the lightning cable? It's 2021, Apple iPhone's all about that USB 2.0 speed, the USB-C, it's right there. Far faster, USB 3.1. Like, I don't wanna be an Apple hater because there, there are some cool things that they do. But like, Apple used to be known for innovation. Like, when the iPhone was released, when the iPad was released, 
Now what they release things four years later and say they invented them. Meanwhile, you have Android users looking at us getting all excited, wondering if we got dropped on our head. And maybe we did. Why are we so pumped about a company that resists changes that would make our lives easier because they have a runway for the, the increases and the upgrades. But also my unexpected anger aside, Apple has conceded defeat in some ways, even without the legislation. Some of their new products like the iPads use USB-C. Also with this story this morning, I asked you beautiful bastards, what are your thoughts on this legislation? Do you want it? Do you not want it? And as of finishing up today's show, 91% of you want it. Many of the comments being far more critical of Apple than even I was today. But hey, not everyone engaged in the polls, whether you're in the minority or the majority here, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. Then in fantastic news, if you like marijuana, weed, cannabis, whatever you call it. Yesterday you had Amazon announcing that it not only will allow employees fired for marijuana use to be rehired, but that policy will also extend to applicants who've been turned away for failed pre-employment screenings. The saying here, pre-employment marijuana testing has disproportionately affected communities of color by stalling job placement and by extension economic growth. And we believe this inequitable treatment is unacceptable. On top of that, Amazon revealed that it is now actively lobbying for the federal legalization of marijuana. And I can't help it, I'm a cynic. Like it's hard for me to see anything that Amazon's doing as like something that they want to do for societal good. Like it just feels like in the next few months or maybe the next few years, they're going to announce like a weed delivery service. And if not that, I imagine at least part of this has to be pushed by the fact that it's hard to get workers right now. Or reportedly, the turnover rate for their hourly employees is 150% every year, with many staying just days or weeks. With execs at the company even reportedly worried that they'll eventually just run out of people to employ if nothing changes. And because of the current job crunch, there are a ton of businesses that are worried. Also, Amazon isn't alone in relaxing their rules around weed. According to the staffing firm, Manpower Group, 9% of more than than 45,000 employers surveyed worldwide have now eliminated job screenings or drug tests in order to attract and retain in-demand talent. And in a survey last year from Current Consulting Group, 36% of businesses that indicated that they were changing their drug screening rules said that they were doing so because of delays or the inability to fill positions due to high marijuana positives. So hey, while the cynic in my brain says this is progress because of corporate desperation, it's still progress. Then in big international news and breaking news, we now have more information about the 2019 murder of Lyra McKee. McKee was an LGBTQ investigative journalist and considered to be one of the best in Northern Ireland. And in April of 2019, she was covering a riot in Derry. And during that, she was shot by the new IRA. Right, and the new IRA is a group formed around 2012 from an amalgamation of other Irish Republican army inspired terrorist groups that are opposed to the 1998 Good Friday Agreement that ended decades of sectarian violence in Northern Ireland. And the reason we know that they did it is that they quickly claimed responsibility responsibility, saying in a statement, in the course of attacking the enemy, Lyra McKee was tragically killed while standing beside enemy forces. The IRA offer our full and sincere apologies to the partner, family, and friends of Lyra McKee for her death. However, despite claiming responsibility, the group was not going to give up the members involved in the attack. With that leading to a years long investigation, one person initially charged in connection with the murder and eventually two more were arrested last week. But now, today, there's more. A 24 year old and a 29 year old man were detained under the Terrorism Act for their involvement in McKee's killing. With prosecutors claiming that these two most recent defendants were with the gunman who fired the shots on the night McKee was killed. Now, as far as the other side of this, the alleged gunman's defense attorneys say that the evidence against their clients is weak, but we really won't know much more until October 7th. But still, for many, this news, or really any news that leads to the murder being solved would come as a relief. Because understandably, you know, it's 2021 now, it happened in 2019. People wondering, you know, are the police gonna continue to have leads? Has the case become cold? But for now, that's where we are. The two men have been released on bail, ordered to return to court on October 7th, and hopefully we get some answers. And ultimately that brings us to the end of this story and actually today's show. With that, as always, I'd love to know your thoughts, whether it be this last story or really anything else that stood out to you today in those comments down below. And of course, as always, mouth it with me. My name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love your faces and I'll see you tomorrow.